Hey guys, I want to talk with you about setting the sale, setting your, your sale and your financial blueprint and how if you're not, if you don't believe, and this comes from our childhood, right? Like I, let me tell you, I got some stuff about myself in my head. That's not true, but I like vaguely or, or deeply or subconsciously believe things about money that keep me from earning more of it. My name is Kyle Studer. I recruit and train life insurance agents all across the country, and we focus in the senior market, final expense, Medicare, and annuities. So I started a new book, and it's really been uh, very intriguing. I've been listening to the audio book in the gym, and then I've been reading the, the hard copy uh, as well. You know, I try to do both sometimes. If I, if I get a book that I really like, I try to listen to it and read it to try to absorb more of it. And so this book is called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not even halfway through it. Um, so it's been pretty awesome. I shared a lot of I shared a lot of what I've learned thus far uh, with my team yesterday. Uh, put it on Zoom call. We talked about things we believe about money, things that we hear when we're young that really hurt our ability to accumulate wealth and money. You know, eighty percent of people will never be financially free, and eighty percent of people will never uh, report or or say that you know. I am truly happy. I can tell you this. I am happy. I'm not wealthy like I want to be, but I am happy. I think you got to be happy. I think you should, maybe you don't have to, but I think you should become, learn to be happy before you get wealthy. Um, if you, if you, chase wealth and success uh you know to spite your parents or out of a out of if it's rooted in anger or aggression um which i went through this as a young person as well like i had a lot of stuff happen in my family developed a chip on my shoulder turned that into a work ethic in baseball and then in sales and uh and in the gym and determination and you know saying i'm gonna make it no matter what uh, I don't need anybody's help, stuff like this. Very lonely strategy. Also very exhausting. And as a young kid, you know, you still have that vague idea like, can I really? Do I really believe everything that I say? Am I really as ambitious as I claim to be? Um, and so this book really gets into deep stuff. Like when I teach agents how to sell life insurance, we teach them how to get deep. We teach them how to see the people differently. We teach them how to tell really good stories so they can get the client emotionally involved because without the emotional involvement, we, we stay on the surface. And so I teach people how to work leads and how to get below the surface and sell policies, really connect. And guys, this is what we have to do for ourselves. We have to get below the surface of ourselves. We have to discover, like, what is it? Why do I think that, you know, why do I have these, why do I have this bad programming about money and wealth, you know? And some people have it worse than others. Um, but I'm going to read to you some of the things this book says, and I want to know if you've heard these growing up. And I promise you, listen, this guy, this guy is a multimillionaire. Then he wrote a book, Okay. And he's trying to help people. He does a seminar on this. He, he struggled for a long time, failed in multiple businesses, and finally realized that it was just the setting of his sale. It was his mindset. So bear with me. I hope, I hope you can bear with me. I want to share with you some of the lessons I've learned here. So one of the first things I'll read to you, if I can find it right here. Okay. Okay, it all comes down to this. If your subconscious 
financial blueprint, the way you think about money, is not set for success. Nothing you learn, nothing you know, and nothing you do will make much of a difference. So it means you could work like a dog, but if in your mind you think you're only, you know, you just have a hard time fathoming or believing that you can make more than X number of dollars. Everybody's different. Some people making $100,000 is like, that's the hump that they just can't get over. $50,000, $70,000, you know, whatever. If you've worked in a career and you made $50,000 for 10 years and you've got faulty programming from when you were a child, both your parents made, you know, 40,000. So you're already doing better than them. And you heard bad things about money, like the filthy rich or the rich are greedy or money doesn't grow on trees or there's never enough, never enough. You know, these things implement, they, they, they implement like negative thinking about money. So a guy says, uh, he does these seminars and inevitably he's teaching people how to open up their mind and realize that their mind is really their limitation. And he's trying to help people discover like you and I, where these limitations come from so we can see it and we can, and we can see it with some clarity and say, you know what? I never really decided that. I adopted that without question. You know, there's a lot of like cliche things that are said in our society. And we just, yep, 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 mm-hmm, yep. And we don't really stop to say, hmm, how'd you come to that conclusion? Or how do you mean? Like someone says, well, you know how money goes, you know, money didn't grow on trees. You got to work hard for your money. It's like, does everybody? Is that so? How do you mean? How did you come to that conclusion? And what I have found is when you question some of these like cliche things people say, and sadly, they live by them. They've adopted them somewhere along their path in life. Their parents said them. They heard that in verbal programming or they modeled their parents or they had specific incidences in life that impacted their, their viewpoint of money. Their, their family lost a house. They filed bankruptcy or their dad kept all the money and mom never had any money. So the daughter has a hard time believing she can have money. Um, there's just things that influence us along the way. We just can't help. You know, we don't know any better. And there's things we have to undo. There's things in my mind I need to undo about money. I need to undo some things. I need to fix some stuff. Okay. So the guy says, there's this part where he does these seminars, opening up people's minds about how to make money and uh, how to, how to believe that they can do it and that there really aren't any limitations really, except for the ones that we create or that we adopted when we were young. And so inevitably at the end of every conference, a guy will come up, a guy or a gal, and they'll say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, T. Harv, you know, money's not that important. And the speaker, T. Harv Ecker, the author, he would say to these people who come up and say this, you know, money's not that important. He would say, you're broke, right? You're broke, right? Because I, I don't meet any rich people that say money's not important. You know? And he, and he gives a great analogy. And you know, that you're broke. That might seem kind of, I don't know, rash. Um, uh, maybe harsh. But in the book, he, he says he's not trying to belittle. He's not trying to separate, you know, or say rich people are better than poor people, or poor people are this. He's not trying to belittle people. He's just trying to show folks that it's truly just a mindset. They just think differently. And you can study how they think and and sway your financial circumstances one way or another, whether you want to think a little bit more like them or a lot more like them, or you want to think more like the poor people or a lot more like that. And so how you think that's the setting of your sail like if you get a sailboat out on the water and we set the sail up and and we've got it set like this 
the wind blows into it and the boat's going this way. If we set the sail the other way, the wind comes, there's natural forces, the wind comes, the, the, the boat moves. So it's the setting of the sail. It's your financial blueprints, how you think about money. Do you think money's evil? Do you think money's hard to get? Do you think it's hard to come by? Do you think it takes a long time to get, to, to get wealthy? Is that so? Is it so for everybody? So <clears throat> let me get into this here. I want to show you a couple things here. All right. This is one thing I want to read to you. We live in a world of duality, up and down, light and dark, hot and cold, in and out, fast and slow, right and left. These are but a few examples of thousands of opposite poles. For one pole to exist, the other pole must exist also. It is possible to have a right, is it possible to have a right side without a left side? Not a chance. Consequently, just as there are outer laws of money, there are inner laws of money. The outer laws include things like business knowledge, money management, investment strategy. These are essential, but the inner game is just as important. An analogy would be a carpenter and his tools. Having top of the line tools is imperative, but being the top notch carpenter who masterfully uses those tools is even more critical. I have a saying, it's not enough to be in the right place at the right time. You have to be the right person in the right place at the right time. So who are you? How do you think? What are your beliefs? What are your habits and traits? How do you feel about yourself? How confident are you in yourself? How well do you relate to others? How much do you trust others? Do you truly feel that you deserve wealth? What is your ability to act in spite of fear? in spite of worry, in spite of inconvenience, in spite of discomfort? Can you act when you're not in the mood? The fact is that your character, your thinking, and your beliefs are a critical part of what determines the level of your success. So I want to get into some of the things you hear <clears throat> about money and how we get programmed, okay? Okay. This is what we spent most of our time talking about in our training. So there's three ways that we're conditioned to think about money. Okay. And it's, this is not, I'm not saying this is a, um, what's the word? I'm not saying that this is like a conspiracy. Okay. I'm just saying, like, I know my mom and dad, they loved me. They were good parents. They helped me to be more secure than other kids. I probably received more love than some other kids. I, you know, I had a good childhood for the most part as of when I was young. There was a great foundation laid, okay? So by no means am I condemning them. I'm only pointing out your parents are not superheroes. They were born into this world just like you and me, you know? born butt naked screaming you know wiped off by the nurse handed to our mother <clears throat> that's how we come into the world and then all we see we have these parents and when we're young our parents are like deities they're like god-like figures we think and i mean i used to think i used to think i used to believe because my mom told me i remember as a little kid she told me how strong my dad was, that my dad was really strong, like physically. And I remember believing that my dad is one of the strongest men in the world. So you see that these people, these our parents, they're just naturally, they're on a pedestal. Same thing happens in business. Guys brand themselves, they market themselves very well individuals put themselves on a pedestal they think this person is different than them but they just have a different vision they do different things it's our natural way to like put people up elevate these people so our parents are like deities and so what we do is 
we have three ways that we're conditioned. So I'm um, back to reading now. So how are we conditioned? We are conditioned in three primary ways in every arena of life, including money. Verbal programming. What did you hear when you were young? Modeling. What did you see when you were young? Specific incidents. What did you experience when you were young? The three aspects of conditioning are important to understand. So let's go over each of them in part two. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's, the, let me tell you some of the stuff that you hear. <laughs> Bad things you hear about money. The verbal programming. Okay. Did you ever hear any of these phrases? Like, money is the root of all evil. By the way, that's an incomplete sentence. That's not what it says. That money is the root of all evil it comes from the Bible. And what it actually says is the love, the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is impartial. This JBL speaker is impartial. It's not good or bad. It's not evil. It's not darkness. Or, or, or light. It's just a speaker. It's impartial. Now, if I use it to club somebody in the head, or if I listen to demonic things with the speaker, or if I listen to uplifting things with the speaker, the speaker is a tool. Money is a tool. Money is a great servant and a terrible master. So when you fall in love with money, if you fall in love with money, it's your master. It's no longer your servant. You've given, you've given up a part of yourself, like your integrity, for example, to have the dollar bill. You've heard people say like, oh, he's a sellout. People sell out for the money. They change their brand. They change their message. They don't speak the full truth and nothing but the truth, all for the sake of the dollar bill. These are all ways of selling out in one form or another. So I just wanted, I'm going to read all these, but I want to point out that money is the root of all evil. Man, I heard that as a kid but that's incomplete. It's incomplete. I'll tell you another thing you hear that's incomplete. Blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. So that tells me, man, me and my brother, my brother, Ryan, man, we're closer. He and I are closer than, than me and anybody else than me and a, a business partner or me and, and just a friend could ever be because he's blood. He's my brother by blood. Blood is thicker than water, but that's not the complete sense. What it actually says is the blood of the covenant, the blood of the agreement, the bond, the bond of the struggle that me and another person go through, the bond of the covenant, or the, the blood, I'm sorry, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. So you see how there's information floating around in our society. And a lot of it, we just hear as kids, money don't grow on trees. What's that tell you? It tells you it's hard to get. It's not just out here for the taking. Maybe not for that person, but for other people, it clearly is. Some people are money magnets. Now, maybe the Uncle John wasn't you know maybe he wasn't a, a money magnet because he thought money doesn't grow on trees man gotta work hard for money man there's never enough money at the end of the month always got more month than money terrible jokes terrible jokes and then they tell their kids this and all their family joke about it about how greedy uh the patriarch the uh, capitalism and all this stuff that's their that's the, the reason they don't have any money it's taxes. It's all this stuff. It's never them. All right. So I just wanted to point that out. There's stuff that floats around that's incomplete, and we don't even ever get to hear the rest of it. And by hearing the rest of it, it completely changes the whole paradigm of that information. So, okay. Did you ever hear phrases like, money's the root of all evil? Save your money for a rainy day. Rich people are greedy. Rich people 
are criminals. Filthy rich. The filthy rich. You have to work hard to make money. Money doesn't grow on trees. You can't be rich and spiritual. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money talks. The rich get poor. I'm sorry. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. You know, that's not for people like us. Not everyone can be rich. There's never enough. And the infamous, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't. These are all terrible things that we hear. He says, in my household, every time I asked my father for money, I'd hear him scream, what am I, made of money? Jokingly, I'd respond, I wish I'll take an arm, a hand, even a finger. He laughed once. Here's the rub. All the statements you heard about money when you were young remain in your subconscious mind as part of your, the blueprint that's running your financial life. Verbal conditioning is extremely powerful. For example, when my son Jesse was three years old, he ran over me and excitedly said, Daddy, let's go see the Ninja Turtle movie. It's playing near us. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out how this little toddler could already be a master of geography. Like, how does he know that the movie theater is close to us? A couple of hours later, I got my answer in the form of a TV commercial advertising the Ninja Turtle movie, which had at the end of the usual tagline, now playing at a theater near you. So his little toddler son heard this, the theater, here's Ninja Turtles, now playing at a theater near you. Dad, it's, it's right down the road from it. It's near us. Verbal conditioning. So here's something that was interesting. So he talks about this guy, Stephen, and uh, how his mom always had terrible thoughts about money. And he could never make more than a certain amount of money because uh, they discovered all these things his mom used to say. And his mom would like almost discourage him from making money. So... Stephen loved his mom and didn't want her to disapprove of him. Obviously, based on her beliefs, if he were to get rich, she wouldn't approve. Therefore, the only thing for him to do was to get rid of any extra money beyond just getting by. Otherwise, he'd be a pig. Now, you would think that choosing between being rich and being approved of by mom or anyone else, for that matter, most people would take being rich. Not a chance. Listen to this. The mind just doesn't work that way. Sure, riches would seem to be the logical choice. But when the subconscious mind must choose between deeply rooted emotions and logic, emotions will always win. We have deeply rooted emotions, experiences, programming, things we've heard, we've picked up. I'm 32 years old. I didn't read a book about money or personal development until I was probably 24, 23, 24 years old, 22. 22 years of my life, never read any books about it. Had 22 years of programming. So the last 10 years, I've made some improvements, but this is a problem. It's a problem for all of us. And so if you want to do better, we have to change the way we think. Guys, this book again, it comes from T. Harbecker, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I encourage you to listen. The audiobook is on YouTube for free. Uh, I picked this up a couple of years ago from a thrift store. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. So these, these resources are accessible. I highly encourage you to listen to them. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. I appreciate the support. And if you want to know about partnering with my agency, learning how to serve the senior market, go to kylestuter.com, scroll to the bottom, and there's a contact card where you can get in touch. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.